group meditation is you are in your element, you see, all the supportive people, and then you will be more strong, yeah? Uh, she she needs to be more with a group, especially when she's weak like that, you see? And that's what you are there for. You come visit her, all of you or some of you, and then tell her, we welcome you back, don't worry, just the situation, or oh, maybe you're sick or something, just come back to us, and then you do better when you're stronger, okay? All right, lady? We've done two video seminars. Yeah, I in know. The past, You've been very uh, diligent. Yeah. yeah, we are very few to to, to work actually, and um, I know, I know. I'm trying to uh, motivate uh, the other initiates, but mm. it's very, very hard. It seems mm -hmm. like it's always the same who yeah. step up to the plate and are really willing to work. I understand. And um, we feel it's uh, for those who work, of us who work. I mean, we we talk over the phone and internet all the time. But um, we really lack the power of group meditation because yeah. we are spread all over Italy. I understand. And uh, we don't get that strength yeah, that, that we feel that other centers get, you know, from just working together and walking in the same direction. I understand, I understand. And uh, most of us who are actually now in Italy are, uh, and who are practicing are foreigners. Yeah. Either Chinese or... Oh, okay. There's a Vietnamese, a Japanese yeah, opera singer, okay, okay. etc. Uh, but slowly, slowly, we feel that um, with the video seminars, people are actually starting to get interested. Yeah. Um, it seems that it's not the mainstream Italian no, who are no. interested. No, they're a Catholic country, baby. Yeah, <laughs> and they're very, very attached to the appearance yes, of the yes. world yes. and uh, food and clothes yeah. and... It seems that it's... They're famous for that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that there are some like you even. So look at that sunny size okay. of the street. See, at least some of you coming. Okay. Uh, you're good. Okay. I just do this uh, video seminar and who comes, who comes. Okay. Who doesn't come, who doesn't come. Okay. Okay. we we'll just continue to do our best. Yeah, do whenever you feel like okay. doing it and if you can. Okay. If you can afford it. Sometimes you're too busy or too little people. Do what mm. you can, okay? okay. For yourself, for fun, okay? okay? okay. <laughs> for fun. And the other who doesn't have you, they miss out something they don't okay. know. Yeah. Not just in this life, but in heaven. Yeah. yeah? And do not bother about them, okay? okay? Yes. Can I ask you another question? Sure, sure. Uh, talking about fun, I seem to not be able to have fun like other people do. I take things way too seriously. Yeah, look, you're crying already, I know. <laughs> 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 so what should I do for you? At least you're smiling. <laughs> So I tell you some joke later. What now? Okay. <laughs> no, it's just that. Okay. Uh, what kind of fun do you want to have in any way in this case, in this life? No. What what fun do we have anyway? Huh? Except when we sit together here, I don't see any fun anywhere. Everything just illusion, really. Because sometimes even, oh, you thought, oh, you find a girl, huh? Oh, beautiful, and she seemed nice and romantic. I'm going. I think I'm going to have a good relationship with her, and then after a few days, we we bluff. <laughs> the same, you find a man and you're lonely, you thought, okay, if I have a man, he would have helped me and I'd be more happy, more energetic, I love life more and I put more uh, work into my life or change my life, he will complete me and all that's all that is just talk. <laughs> After <laughs> stay together for a few days, a few weeks, a few months and you see the other side of the street, it's just flop again. See, I mean, everything is just a cheat, yeah? It's just hanging in there, look like good, eh? All that is uh, not gold, you know, <laughs> that glitters, you know? And then you think, oh, if I have that, I'll be happier, yeah? Or if I have that house, I'll be happier. If I have that car, I will feel more myself. If I get the man, I will feel more complete. <laughs> it's all a cheat, a cheating game. We lose all the time in this world. Mostly we don't win. It's like casino. <laughs> <laughs> A lot though, you know? Just one or two person win, the rest are just spending <laughs> spending all the time. You understand? Yes, I do. No much fun anyway. What fun you wanna have? Tell me and then I probably can arrange it. I don't <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's I just hear you say you know how initiates are happy and Yes. Oh they are happy. Yeah. But they don't look for fun. Yeah. They know there's not too much fun in this world. Yeah. They're just content within themselves. Okay. Okay. So what kind of fun you think? So what I kind of thing I... would make you feel fun? 
I guess I, I should not say fun. I mean, just feeling content and just happy with okay, things how they me, are. Okay, tell me, what is your family condition, your job? Are you happy with your job, your family? What makes you trouble? I actually don't have any trouble. So, so why? <laughs> well, I, I look at everything as work. Yes. So I have two small children, mm -hmm. um, mm. five and seven. Yes. I have a husband who is very supportive but yes. doesn't practice. He's yes. vegetarian. Yes. Um, so... Things go well. I have Everything. nothing to complain about. I just wonder, well, why don't I seem to be, you know, Happy. cheerful like yeah. other people? Maybe you work too hard. Okay. You know, family are demanding. You know, children are demanding. Mm -hmm. You've been giving, giving, giving all the time. Yeah. And perhaps you need a break or something. Okay. Let somebody take care of you for a change. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Like a good husband, a supportive husband <laughs> is not everything. Because he might be saying, okay, honey, go ahead, go ahead, you're good, good, good. But he doesn't do much to mm -hmm. help you, or he doesn't surprise you mm -hmm. with some fun activity. Everything you have to organize. You are the mother of all, to your husband as well. You always have to cook for him, clean after him, or tell him what to do, or even tell him that you need a kiss, mm -hmm. tell him that you need a shoulder when you said He doesn't do it uh, mm -hmm. automatically. Mm -hmm. Some men are not considerate, mm -hmm. not too sensitive enough to your feeling. And it could be... <laughs> He could be one of those. Mm -hmm. He's supportive, nothing wrong with him. He doesn't go out gambling, mm -hmm. he doesn't have eye on other women, but he's good for nothing, <laughs> for example. <laughs> you know what I mean? He could be not romantic enough, yeah? Mm -hmm. He could be uh, taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. He could be expecting you to cook all the time. Mm -hmm. He could be expecting you to take lead all the time. You always have to think of what to do for both of you. Mm -hmm. He would never do anything to surprise you or to make mm -hmm. you happy a little or to consider that you have a break or, you know, that somebody, that you feel that somebody cares for you mm -hmm. for once for a while or without you asking, without you hinting, honey, I'm tired, you know? Do mm -hmm. you understand me? Yes. Without you have to ask, can you cook today? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That uh, some husbands are like that. They don't surprise you. They're so boring. You understand me? They're good. They're not bad. Not bad in a way that they don't go womanizing and they eat vegetarian. But apart from that, nothing else happening. You understand what I mean? And you probably are too tired. No, no, I'm not joking. You are probably too tired of always have to make the initiative. Always be the leader, yeah? yeah? Always be the mother, yeah? yeah? You don't mind to do that. You are loving and kind. Yes, but sometimes you need a break. Okay. And a supportive husband don't always give you the break that you need. He give you everything except what you need. You know what I mean? He might be do things nicely, but when you don't need, and when you need it, he doesn't do it. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, what I say doesn't scratch you where it's itch. <laughs> <laughs> and you are tired of having to tell him. You know, sometimes you're shy not to tell him. Okay, or sometimes you're too tired to tell him. And sometimes if you tell him then you don't feel fun anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you have to ask for a kiss, mm -hmm. yeah? To ask for a hug. Then there's no more fun. Mm -hmm. Then he will give you like a charity. You see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you feel like a, he's like a beggar here, you know what I mean? So, men, you guys listen to me. <laughs> I'm not joking, okay? Woman, your wife or your mother, they're not invincible, okay? They're not invincible. They're, they're nice, they're good, they're loving, they're caring, but they're not Invincible. Is that what it means? You know, not like forever undefeatable. Yeah? Sometimes they have their day, yeah? They have their PMS, nah? They have their tiredness, they have their burn out, you know? Forgiving all the time. So you give him some surprise. Ask her to go out for dinner, yeah? Cook for her, even if you cook not too good, she'll be happy, yeah? But you have to sense it. Don't cook when she's already rolling her sleeve and trying to make a beautiful mince pie for everybody, and then you say, I cook. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no. You do it when she needs it, okay? Do the right thing at the right time. Because the right thing at the wrong time is also wrong. And the wrong thing at the right time is even worse. Yeah. Yeah, men are not sensitive enough. You understand me? Supportive is not just always applauding. Oh, go ahead, honey, kill yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, you surprise her, okay? Hug her, kiss her, you know, I mean, really genuinely appreciate for the hard work that she have done. 
for you and your family, yeah? Because a woman mostly, she sees everything, she does everything. And a man hardly notice it. Sometimes she's tired of giving, you know? Not tired of giving, but too depleted, okay? I need some shoulder to cry on or need a hug, you know? Need a surprise dinner. Okay, take her to movies or take her out for something that she likes, you know, if she loves to be cooked for and cook something for her, yeah? Or buy something nice to bring home, yeah? Or some kind words and a hug and really help physically as well, yeah? Surprise her with something she likes. I don't mean diamond and all that, but, you know, even any little thing will count, yeah? Cook for her when she's tired. Bring her breakfast in bed sometimes. Massage her feet. Massage the body, yeah? Run her a ba- the, a warm bath when you know she came home from a hard day work. Just run a warm bath or something, yeah? Or cook some tea. Or cook a dinner waiting. Make a fire, yeah? Do something that is cozy and nice and welcome and loving, okay? Yeah, the way she does it for you, you love it her, you love her because she does cook nice, she takes care of the family. The way you love her, the way she is, you do it. You understand me? I don't mean every day. When she needs it, now and again, she would really appreciate that. And you'll be her God in no time. <laughs> Even if you're already 90 and have no more teeth. <laughs> they love you. <laughs> you understand that? Yes, because let's face it, after married for a long time, what do you have anymore? Huh? The, the bad business become less <laughs> exciting already, yeah? And all you have is just work, work for each other <laughs> every day, looking at the same guy, and you're getting bolder every day, <laughs> and older, and she also, and sometimes she doesn't feel loved anymore because you don't care anymore. Or sometimes she talks, you just listen to TV and, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Ah, uh huh. <laughs> wow! Shoot it, shoot it, man! Shoot it. <laughs> Talking to the footballer, you know. Ah, uh-huh, ah, uh-huh. Wow! My God, that's a stupid shot. Terrible. Ah, uh-huh, ah, uh-huh. you know, like that, and the remote control. So supportive husband. How supportive? <laughs> Do you understand? Maybe that's why you run down. You feel unloved, uncared for. Yeah. Nobody do anything bad to you, but nobody do anything good either. <laughs> the children, they're only so small. Mm. They can only give you a hug and then the mama was for dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and the same with the husband. They take it for granted. Most husbands take the wife for granted that, okay, she cooks, she clean, she keeps the house. And that's the way it is, you know? It's not like that, okay? Human is human. Women are not invincible, okay? In fact, women are not as strong as men. So she needs sometimes a little break, huh? I'll tell her, okay, you go out, do what you want, or give her some extra money, you go buy what you want today, I cook, I take care of the kid. Just tell me what to do, give me a list and i do it. Oh, you go out, have fun with your girlfriend or do whatever. Uh, it's not just that only, you know, give her a massage, give her a hug, give her a kiss, just like beginning, yeah? You can do it every day, maybe, but especially when she needs it, you do it, okay? If you can do it every day, then it's, it's, it's really good. Tell your husband, listen to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yeah. Is that for me or for Frank Sinatra? <laughs> no, because he's Italian, no? There are songs he sings beautifully, you know? Tell her you love her, tell her you love her today, yeah? With a kisses or two, her life is sunny, yeah? Um, give her the reason to live. She needs the love that you give. Always sharing, always caring. Everything you do. When somebody loves you, like I love you. It's caring, sharing, eh? Caring and sharing. Sharing not just a good time, but a bad time as well. Sharing the burden of the family, yeah? Sharing the responsibility. Mostly women do too much in the house. It's truly like that. Because men, they don't see things, they don't see details, yeah? Women see too much, do too much. It's a mother instinct, but sometimes too much makes you tired, okay? That's why you don't have fun. Maybe that's the problem. Is it the problem? What I'm t- telling you, is that the problem or not? 
Uh, well, where is the problem? Partially so. Yeah. I, I think I push myself also because I feel really that it's important to get the message out to Italian people. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I do as much as I can. Uh -huh. And then there's, you know, there's requests for filming. And I would very much like to do that, but yeah. we don't have the um, technical knowledge okay, yet. Then tell them, no? <laughs> yeah. Tell them later. Yeah. yeah. If they request it, just say, oh, take it easy. <laughs> we don't have enough people. Yeah. We have only uh, four, two, three, yeah. five. Yeah. And but we will try to do it later. We will okay. tell you when we are ready. Okay. It's very simple. Okay. okay. They request. They don't kill you for it. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they request because they want to show your country to the world. Right. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. But if you're not ready, you're not ready. Yeah. Huh? Okay? Okay. And meanwhile, you buy yourself time, and if you think you can do it, then you buy something, you get the technique, uh, re acquaint yourself with whatever you okay. want to do, if you can. Okay. If you cannot, then you cannot. You say, we can't. We cannot. Okay. Huh? Okay. No possible. That's okay. all? Okay? Okay. Thank you, yeah. Master. And you ask your husband to do it, because he's a man. He's good with techniques. Yeah, but he's already overloaded 120 percent. Yeah, 120 percent. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Poor guy. Because we we actually bought some land. Uh -huh. um, beginning of the year, we were looking um, with other association members to buy some land in Italy, yeah. and it didn't come through. But yeah. I decided I was still wanted to go ahead. Yeah. And we just bought the land. It's uh, seven hectares mm -hmm. um, of beautiful land, and uh, we're going to uh, create first a family home, but yeah. it's all going to be um, sustainable. We're going to be straw bale and mm -hmm. uh, raw earth houses, oh, yeah, okay. uh, solar panel, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. self-sufficiency, sustainable right. living, permaculture. So why should you not be happy? I'm really looking forward to that. Oh yeah, that yeah. should be fun already. Yeah. yeah. My God, you complain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I tell myself too. I should just be happy with what I have and stop. You know. I think you're. I thinking don't know. Too much. Something lacking. No, no. Hmm. Something missing hmm. in your life. You need some juice. Yeah. <laughs> some jest. Yeah. Something that uh, make you truly happy. And maybe it's not the house that you want. You just buy it because you're lonely. Uh, you don't feel enough. You know, maybe family life. It's not uh, as uh, how you say. A Jesse, as you want, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Because most people, when they're lacking of romantic feeling, you know, they do many other things, but they feel very powerless, you know, less energy. So you have to look truly where the problem lay, okay. and work on that, you know. Okay. Maybe husband too busy, hundred percent, one hundred twenty percent. That is a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> Supportive, but dead. <laughs> you can't get anything out of him, <laughs> except the word supportive written over here, mm -hmm. nothing else happening. <laughs> so you feel dry up, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay? Burn out. So you have to look through, really, what is the problem? What is it that you want? Okay? Don't cover up with work and with land and house and whatever that you think there is. No, no, don't cover it up, okay? Okay. If you have a boy here, you address the boy, don't just wear some nice clothes over it. It won't get any better. Okay. All right, next one. You know what I mean, right? Yes. I think the problem is with your relationship with the husband, okay? Both of you are <laughs> too busy, <laughs> yeah? And you feel dry up, okay? You need that. Support is not just the word and not the mental, it's something else as well, physical also, yep, emotional, yeah. For example, uh, is that it, uh, if uh, the flat is uh, some property, if a uh, mo mortgage is uh, for, for it? Yeah, I know. Well, what is it that your question? So it is uh, that your advice to sell this uh, flat and to pay for this mortgage? So you don't have debt? Yes. Oh, I see, but you have your husband to consider. I don't know if he wants to sell the flat or not. You see? Yeah. You don't ask me to decide for <laughs> your family stuff. How can I say yes or no? It's your husband. You have to talk to him, okay? Yeah. Yes. I don't think he already is not happy with your vegetarian diet. Would he be happy to sell the flat for you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, do what you can. <laughs> do what you can. Uh, it's okay if 
I mean, I'm just generally giving you an advice. What is the best? You know, if it were up to me, okay? If it's my life, that I would do the debt-free life, okay? But you're so entangled with so many stuff already. I don't know if you can manage it. If you don't, do it on purpose. And if it's your husband who doesn't want to pay the debt, then you'll be free of karma, okay? But don't try to hint him that, okay, don't sell the house, it doesn't matter, and then let him decide and blame it on him. It's not like that, okay? If anything you, you can, then you try to tidy up your life. Do you understand me? But if you cannot, then you cannot, eh? All right? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. What I'm telling you guys is that if you're single, okay, and you're paying a big flat for two, three rooms for yourself, for what, yeah? And you could live together with other singles, you know, a compatible, compatible uh, uh, initiates who are also in the same situation, yeah? Single, no attachment, and have job and nearby. You can live together and go to the same car with the same car to work in different nearby company or go by bus, something like that. So you pour money in to pay for the flat together instead of wasting a three room for yourself, a three room for himself, and three room or or the two of the self and, you know, scattered everywhere and paying a lot of money. Uh, and then you, you earn a lot, but you pay a lot, see? And then you have to work the whole life, <laughs> you understand? And still owning mortgage, okay? But if you tied up and you live together, it's more economy, economizing. And then your life is less burden. You don't have debt and you have always spare money to do what you want to go on retreat or to buy other necessity or to help the poor people or just to be free of that and to live together you have uh, support to each other one day you cook one day i cook it's life is more maybe less uh, burdensome also less lonely that's all okay <laughs> it's just a suggestion general guidance yeah but it has you have to consider your your own situation is different huh? okay yeah next one yes Sister from Chile and I were talking, uh, and I was telling her that my baby granddaughter is allergic to to milk. milk. And, okay. Yes, and she added that uh, many children are allergic to animal ingredients. Now, mm -hmm. is it possible that nowadays uh, a new kind of children are born? <laughs> yes, maybe. It's possible that a new race of children are born. It is another possibility that they put too much chemical. Yeah, into the cow. Yeah? You understand me? That's why the, the children are allergic. It's another possibility that it's a sign that we should not use anymore anymore. We should not abuse anymore and squeeze so much milk out of them. I mean, normally the cow be willing to give. Yeah? They're even very happy to produce some milk to some children in case of need. They would do that willingly. But to force the cow to live together in such a squeezing factory farming and they cannot even turn around their whole life and squeeze a milk out of them and force them to give more milk with chemical and with medicine, drug and all that. This, this is inhumane. Some cow give too much milk, they could not even walk anymore. They're too weak. You know, their bones are falling apart. Do you understand me? That is very, very cruel, very inhuman. That's abuse beyond imagination. So maybe some children know that and they just refuse the milk. Give them soy milk, they're okay. Soy milk is good, yeah? All right. Mestra, toda minha vida, eu sabia que iria encontrar uma maestra. Tinha consciência, mas não sabia onde. All my life I've been searching for a master, but um, I didn't know how to and I didn't know where. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, primeiramente, eu buscava em las religiões, depois do desprezei las religiões porque não tinha nas ensinamentos originais. Uh, I looked through all religions and, and uh, here and there, but uh, I forgot about the religions because they didn't have the real essence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. E depois, em Brasil mesmo, eu pude encontrar a maestra, que é o mestre dos mestres. Uh, And it was in Brazil, uh, same Brazil itself, that I found uh, uh, our master, uh, the master of the masters. Mm -hmm. And my soul has consciousness that this was all I wanted in this life. 
and my soul is, is conscious that um, that's all I ever wanted in my life. Uh -huh. E há uma outra coisa que, como se fosse uma recordação, é quando a mestra uh, lê os ensinamentos, é como se eu recordasse isso. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what? And so when Master talks about all, all the teachings, um, she, she remember as, as, as yesterday and when she was searching for you. I te agradeço muito, Mestre, por tudo isso, por esse encontro com o Mestre dos Mestres, por esse momento e por todo sempre. I forever will thank you, Master, for uh, letting me find you. E gostaria de fazer um pedido, se for possível. I'd like to ask you uh, something, if you don't mind, please. Sure, sure. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Uh, Master, give me, please, the spiritual name. The spiritual Master, name? Yes. What spiritual names? Uh, she would like to... Uh, Five names? Uh, no, no, no. If she would like to give her a spiritual name. Uh -huh. like. Oh. Why? You don't have a name? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have... What for, honey? Any name you give, you have, is fine. Just the name of the body. El nombre que tienes está bien. What's your name? Marta. Marta. Marta is a very good. Marta is a, the best helper of Jesus. Oh, my God. Yeah. When Jesus was alive. Mas, no? E nessa encarnação não teria outro? And in this reincarnation, would I have another name or...? Why? Okay. Why you want another name? Receber o nome da mãe, da mestra. It would be very nice to receive a name from, from my mother, master. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> This don't mean anything, honey. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, we call her Lutza. Lutza. <laughs> <laughs> mean light, huh? It significa luz. Oh, master, thank you. Lutz from La Luz, yeah? Luz, yes. Lutza. Lutza. Okay? Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Master. Otherwise, you'd be naked to eternity. <laughs> And don't you dare. <laughs> don't even think about it. Okay. What else? Anything else? Is it finished? No, thank you. It's a todo. <laughs> todo. Okay. Good. Good. Thanks. Thank God. <laughs> What else? Talk a lot and then I want a name. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, from Israel. Uh, and, uh, where? Israel. Israel. Oh, good. Yeah. I just wanted to, uh, first of all, to thank you for all the support in uh, Israel and the whole region. And uh, we've been there a few weeks ago. And there's actually some sprouting. Uh, one sister, she's uh, starting to have a regular group meditation with some convenient method. Mm -hmm. A couple of them came through the. Uh, Master TV. Yeah. So um, it's kind of it's something. Is, something is starting there. Okay. And, and, and there's also a lot of positive uh, uh, groups of people. It was amazing because we did some interviews. Yeah. And there was so much uh, really deep work that people are doing over there. Yes. Uh, between uh, Palestinian and Israelis. Yes. And between themselves is really really exciting. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. They're talking peace every week now. Yeah. Every two three weeks. They're really serious about it, and with all the international international support for for Palestine now, that we're not trying to to make trouble also, yeah. So we both, you both are trying to to be good, yeah. And whatever the Palestine need, like financial support, the government of the world is giving a lot now, so they will have no excuse to make any more trouble, and because they don't make trouble, so Israel also don't make trouble. And Israel don't make trouble, so Palestine also don't make trouble. <laughs> it had to start somewhere, no? So if both don't start, then it's going to be peace. Yeah? They're really scratching where it itch now. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, Palestine needs a lot of help now. Yeah? They've been, uh, I would say, embargoed for a long time. You know, they really need help. Yeah? Mm. Okay. I'm happy that you see the positive change. It's too slow for me anyway, but it's better than nothing. Okay? Yes, <laughs> right. Who else? El centro de Chile, maestra, ha sido eh, después de que usted vimos los videos de Austria y de Hungría fue un cambio pero absoluto. 
todo el centro, los 45 hermanos que hay en el Santiago de Chile, han trabajado, pero a la par. Yo hace un año y medio que solamente soy persona de contacto. Since the Hungary videos and the Austria videos, uh, the old 45 initiatives in Chile, they've been working flat on and, and they go better and better. They, they've been oh. doing it right, right away. Oh, good. Things uh, very diligently and all that stuff. And uh, she's only been a um, contact person for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Eh, ha vuelto también mucha gente que se había ido del centro porque como en todos los centros hay fricciones y problemas. She's noticed also that uh, many people that kind of lack back or went away, they come back and, oh. and they've been getting better and Good. the frictions that were there kind of uh, been easing up. Mm. Eh, se han hecho trabajos grandes, exposiciones en las cuales eh, Hemos hecho degustación días completos en las universidades, exposiciones de 15, 20 días. Oh, good. Uh, they've been on um, uh, festivals and expositions and all, that, um, all these things, and, and they've been, been doing de degustations of uh, yeah. vegetarian food and, and wow. universities I'm, and all that. I'm stuff. impressed because Chile is a young born, you know, country. My statistic is impressive because Chile is very young and very young. Yes, we have done a lot of things, but I think the most important thing is to know who we are working, Master. We found out a long time ago that it is not just the teacher. They have been doing all these things and, and, and they know in their heart who they are working for. Oh. And, um, they kind of become to realize sino que es dios el que está representado en usted that they working for god that is represented in you mm. eh, igual eh, la hermana que se siente tan agobiada eh, ella también debería pensar eso que no estamos estamos trabajando para dios y todos los días levantarse y decir que afortunada soy por tener a dios en mi vida At the same time, I want to say to the sister that's feeling a bit uh, not having fun in her life that she should uh, wake up every morning and say thanks that she's doing such a great job on a job that's for God. Como le digo, soy nueva, un año y medio de contacto. Tengo tres hijos que estudian en la universidad y tengo un marido ciego, pero soy feliz, feliz, feliz. Pero lo tengo todo. I just want to say that I, I um, I've been only um, a year and a half a contact person. I am a married woman with three children and, yes. and a blind husband, but she's very happy because she thinks she's got everything she needs. Inclusive uno de mis hijos, son todos del método conveniente, pero uno ya se inició y estuvo trabajando en el canal de la maestra. She said that all, the, all her children are convenient method, and one of them is already and fully initiated, and he's already been uh, on the SNTV for six months. Mm. Yo lo, lo único que pienso y digo es, es saber realmente quién es y qué es Dios y, y todo lo demás viene por añadidura, nada más. Lo uno, y, y lo único, y te queremos maestra desde Chile, pero enormemente. Y gracias por todo lo que nos das. I just want to say that um, I, I always tell myself that I'm working for God and um, just want to say that we love you. Uh, all uh, love from Chile, from everybody. Thank you, thank you. I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased. Yeah. yeah. It's just that uh, everyone's situation and background is different. Lo que pasa es que cada nosotros tenemos diferentes situaciones y diferentes culturas. Yes. And uh, it's uh, very fortunate that you have a very positive outlook. Y es una gran fortuna que estás en esta situación. Maybe personality also. Y tu personalidad te ayuda mucho. Play some roles in it. Yes. And also family situation. Y la familia también que te ayuda yeah. y soporta. Yeah, and friends. Y los amigos. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everybody. So don't blame them if they're different. <laughs> so no los culpes, pronto son un poco diferentes. They're trying their best. Yeah. <laughs> Cada quien trata lo mejor que puede. But I'm very pleased with you and uh, your outlook and uh, your group. La maestra está muy feliz con, con todos ustedes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will send the Chilean group something special later. Yeah. So nice to hear such a positive attitude. 
Mas sei, sei que é muito, muito, muito alegre escutar algo assim tão positivo. Yeah. I wish that everyone can be like that, but you know, different karma, different background, different surrounding, different country, different tradition, it make it harder or easier for someone. Me gustaría que todo fuera como como ustedes, pero different diferentes culturas de donde venimos, los amigos, las situaciones y la vida nuestra de todos los días nos hace un poco diferentes a todos. Yes, even sometimes it make it feel hard for me also. Algunas veces es muy duro para mí también. But I still do it. <laughs> yo aún sigo. Yeah, yes. Uh, even if they feel hard, but they still do it. Aún si ellos se sienten un poco forzados, aún siguen, siguen para adelante. And that's what good about them. <laughs> Eso es lo que me gusta de ellos. Yeah. Yes. I hope you'll be contact person for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Espero que siga siendo contacto por mucho tiempo. <laughs> for a long time. La, la verdad es que a mí la palabra contacto no la uso en el centro, la uso, eh, uso la palabra coordinadora y les gustó mucho más que contacto. Y así como ahora soy coordinadora, todos ayudan. Uh, she, she doesn't use the contact person, uh, contact in the center. She is more like a coordinator or, or a, a team leader. So now uh -huh. everybody's kind of getting excited and help more. Uh -huh. Okay. Then we, we can do that. Eh, una de las cosas que les dije yo a los hermanos cuando eh, fui persona contacto, que no podía ser que siempre la contacto era la persona que hasta limpiaba el baño en el centro. One of the things that I said to the uh, everybody at the center is that the contact person is not the person that always cleaning or keeping the center up or something mm. like that. Yeah. Y todos quedaron con trabajos ahí, trabajos de aseo, trabajos de cocina, trabajos de televisión, de traducción. Tenemos cinco traductores que trabajan para el libro y para el canal. So uh, she kind of distributed every every single job in the center, including yeah. five translators that are uh, translating for um, the books and the channel. Mm -hmm. Y pienso que somos muy felices, maestra, porque nos dimos cuenta, como le digo, después de, de Hungría hubo un cambio. Uh, I think we, we're very happy, and, and, and I just want to tell you that since Hungary, um, we, we turn around. Mm -hmm. turn around. Oh, why? Why Hungary? ¿Por qué? Sí. Porque nos dimos cuenta que no era simplemente la maestra, ni Jesús, ni esto, sino que era Dios. Porque, uh, because we realized it wasn't just the master or Jesus, it was, it was we're doing it for God. Oh, wonderful. Thank God. Maravilloso. <laughs> Thanks God. Gracias a Dios. <laughs> Wonderful. I am very happy that you have good company and that your your whole group changed the concept inside. And that's important. They have to change from inside. La the maestra, concept have to change. La maestra está muy feliz que ustedes cambiaron y, y que el cambio ya ha venido desde aquí, desde dentro del corazón. That's very important. Muy yeah. important. But fortunately, not everybody can change like that. They all know about Hungarian, but they don't change. So I'm very happy for your group. I'm very pleased. Desafortunadamente muchos saben de, de lo de Hungría y, y la maestra, pero muchos no han cambiado. Solamente saben. Hmm. And I'm feliz. also pleased with every other group in different way. Yes. Y la maestra está the muy one feliz. that changed. Yes. La maestra está muy feliz con todos los que han cambiado hmm. después de aquel. And the one is not changed. I am also happy somehow. <laughs> y con los que no han cambiado también estoy feliz. Yeah, at least they are still vegetarian and they still have faith, you know, they save themselves at least so I don't have to fish them out from hell. At least they save themselves, eh? A less job for me, for, for us. Con todo esto, maestra, que se hizo en Chile, salió una empresa nueva. With everything that we've done in, in Chile, uh, uh, a new enterprise kind of um, have publicas? been born. Con las publicaciones, yeah. con las publicaciones del canal y todo. With, yeah, with the, all the advertisement with, for, the, for the SNTV, the, mm. a, a new um, advertisement company has kind of born. Eh, mm. Es una empresa que se dedica a la comida de niños vegetarianos, mm. porque han sucedido muchos casos en Chile de niños que eh, eh, no quieren comer carne. Oh, uh, it's a company that kind of uh, takes care of the... Uh, 
children that are vegetarian mm. because in, uh, lately in Chile has been a, a kind of um, a new wave uh, mm. of um, vegetarian children that don't want to eat any, any animal. Wow. Thanks. Se, ah. vende, se venden los colados igual que se venden para los niños común y corriente, pero se venden para niños vegetarianos. Mm. Oh, they kind of like the porridge. Um, they sell the porridge for, um, for vegetarian children, mm. uh, as similar as the, as the one that's with the animal uh, mm. things in it. Yes, but without animal. Without yeah. the animal things for the vegetarian. Igual los dos diarios donde está, hemos estado publicando, que hemos pagado, Ahora también han hecho muchas publicaciones gratis porque se dan cuenta que desde que está la maestra venden mucho. Ah, oh, they, they just pay a, a journalist, uh, a journal to um, to publish two advert, uh, adverts about the SMTV. Yes. And now because they, they, their sales increased, they cannot do an uh, advertisement for us for free. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes. Mucho gracias. Uh, She has to let us know so we can thank them on TV. You see the whole list of the journalists and the newspaper that help us. Yeah, reduce the price or free and all that. We we thank them all. You see the whole world is supporting. You see the list is impressive. Tienes que coger los nombres de los que te están ayudando, de los de los periódicos que te están ayudando, los que te dan rebaja, para que agradecerles en el canal. Did you tell the SMT? Ya lo hizo, ya lo hicieron. Mandaron material a los dos diarios donde en uno salió completamente portada y reportaje y le mandaron de la asociación eh, DVD, libro eh, y, y una torta que tuve que hacer yo para regalar. Oh, uh, she already reported to the SMTV and they, okay. they sent some books back and, and okay. she cooked uh, or she baked a, a cake. For okay, them. and thank them and everything. Okay, and it's on the list. Sí, está okay, lista. on the list. Good, good. Yeah, That is fine. That's fine. I just want to make sure that we thank them. You know. La maestra quiere asegurarse que le, le, les agradeceremos en el canal. The no supportive uh, uh, news media. Están soportando, están yes. ayudando. Oh, it's a long list, huh? but we still miss out some. You know, we still miss out some. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, uh, one or two newspapers also didn't want to put our advertisement on their paper, even though we pay. Because somebody talk nonsense, say, oh, blah, blah, blah. And now everybody knows the whole world is supporting. At least the media is supporting. It's very heartwarming, no? We have to thank them. Yeah, okay. It's very good for Chile. <laughs> Muy bien for Chile. Mm. Yeah. I have a couple things came to me uh, over the last six months or so about how to get more people interested. Yes. The Western minded people, which I, you know, I'm yes. familiar with more than anybody else because yes. where I'm from. Right. They always need some kind of proof, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't think that that would ever be possible to um, come up with a way to prove it to people, uh, the validity of a path or not. But I read this book recently called Power Versus Force, and this mm -hmm. guy, he does applied kinesiology, mm -hmm. which is a, um, a way to calibrate the truth of a statement or not. Mm -hmm. And... Um, It has a lot of popularity in this country, I know for sure. And he also came up with a calibration system about um, how to calibrate the, uh, the relative truth of a path. So mm. he, he did calibrations about Christianity when Jesus was still alive. Mm -hmm. And his, his calibrations are from one to a thousand, meaning a thousand being the mm. ultimate, uh, absolute truth. Yes. So it, he, at the beginning, Christianity was a thousand. So after the centuries you know, went on and the teaching got altered, mm -hmm. He literally calibrated how the the truth diminished in that path based right. on the, the changes that were made yeah. in that. Yeah. So a lot of people have this information, and um, I was thinking to somehow, you know, send them your name and what we're doing, um, mm -hmm. and if they could calibrate it at a thousand, you know, which w they would, then in, in a lot of people's minds, that would be proof mm -hmm. that of the validity of that path, and that would uh. increase interest, at least in the Western-minded people. Do you want to pay him to do that? No, no, he would do it for free. He tests, oh, really? he tests things all the time. Like, what if he tests and he says he's not? <laughs> the idea here is that this is like a fail-proof system mm -hmm. that you can calibrate different people um, mm -hmm. regardless of their belief system. The way it works is it's through muscle testing, which is a um, mm -hmm. you hold your arm out and they... Mm -hmm. So I have to go there and put no, my no, arm out? No, you don't out. have to do anything. <laughs> They'll test, uh -huh. the, you know, random subjects you know, to, until they get a, an answer that they feel satisfied with. Oh. 
um, and they, they go through, it's a very vigorous kind of scientific process that they go through to do this. And, you know, if it came out, and which I, I'm sure it would, um, mm -hmm. then this man is all about promoting the highest truth, so he would oh. do that. Oh. Which would, you know, definitely increase Why interest. didn't he know about us yet? I have no idea. I mean, uh, it, you know, maybe he knew. Uh, maybe he already calculating. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. And but no? I was gonna. I was gonna call up and you know. Maybe you try to do it for fun. What if he say no and then you fail, right? You well, leave I, me. Uh? No, I won't leave you. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you're, I'm with you, but you okay. know, I mean, I'm just trying to get more people with you. I understand. I understand. But you see, it, it's I don't know. Uh, it's not about proving ourselves, ne? Sure. Maybe it's nice to be proved also. But the people, they have to have yearning in their heart, you see. When they are yearning, then God would send something to them. You know, there's one guy who works in STMTV. You know how he found me? In a garbage can, all the way in India. <laughs> he never met me until last time I allowed him to come to retreat. He just, uh, he was in India, and then he found a booklet that somebody throw it in the, the garbage can, garbage bin, and he, he, he took the leaflet, come home, leave, read it, and that's how he fly and get initiation. And now he's working for SMTV, he's so happy. <laughs> when I say, oh, I allow some people to come here to retreat, and they come and tell him, okay, you are asked to go to Paris. He was so scared, he think they kick him out. <laughs> He was so sad, so scared, you know, <laughs> because he loved it there. And, uh, you know, it just, it's nice to be proof and all that, yeah? But uh, if people do not believe, will be, people do not yearn for God. I'm not sure if it's just for fun, that's all. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah. But there's also another um, another way to reach a different group of people, which I, I'm for sure that would work. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of this prophecy or not, but the native people in this country have a prophecy about white buffalo calf woman. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I have a native friend, and I, and I, she learned the convenient method, actually. And one time we were in her car just talking about it, and mm -hmm. I didn't really know that much about it, too many details. Yes. And I just got this, like, shoot of electricity up my spine, and it just occurred to me that it's you. Yeah? How? <laughs> I don't know, but I just, I feel like, you know, because they're they're thinking... Or they're looking for a person who's not in their culture who will come to, like, show them the true way. I understand. And, um... And suddenly you got that revelation. Yeah, it wasn't even understand. like... I didn't... I, I just... I spit it out, you know, it just came I, out of my mouth. And I, I thought, understand. And I have a really strong affinity with the Native people. Yes. And, um... I don't know how to go about that or how, yeah. how I would, you know, approach that, but... Yeah. I, I really just... feel like they would respond very yes, strongly yes, to yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that it would, I mean, and they're very sincere people. And very... Yes, they are. And they're very honest. And, you know, one time I was working with a guy in the Malibu Beach, both because we were praying for the safety of people, the fire at that time in the United States. And there was one guy named uh, Juan Wolf, huh? and he invited me to his uh, uh, ceremony with his uh, followers in American and all that. And he said, the elders have a message for me. Say what you're doing is good, and uh, God sent you something like that. Yeah, but I uh, know that's it. You know, <laughs> they do what they do, and I do what I do. <laughs> you know, it just uh, even remember last time uh, there was a, an, a a Korean guy who analyzed uh, hair or something like that, and say that I'm all completely enlightened, something like that. But still, okay, they do what they do, and I do what I do. <laughs> There's no. I don't know any grand effect come out of that. You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, also because, I, th I guess because only some disciples know about it, and they, they take it for granted that we already know anyway. You know, that Master is enlightened, what's new? Yeah? And the outside people, they don't have a chance to know it anyway. So with proof or not proof, you know, only the disciples know about it because they yearn for it and they get response, you see? And outside people, sometimes they know it, but they still don't follow. That's the problem, because they don't yearn for God. Really, it's, it's very good what all you were thinking. It's just, oh, you do what you do, okay? You do what you can and what you think is good, yeah? But uh, the outcome, don't be disappointed if nothing comes out of it. Sure. That's the problem, because humans are like that, you see? Thousands and thousands of years, Master comes and go, and they only ask for miracle, and bravo, and then go home. When I went to lecture, many times people uh, at that moment see the light all over the 
the lecture hall, yeah, and they see themselves, the who I am, and I have light and all that, and still they don't get initiation, baby. Not the people who see it get initiation. The people who don't see it <laughs> come back for initiation and stay. <laughs> I always wonder. Yeah, sometimes people, they don't make use of the gift of their knowledge or the gift of the warning or the gift of a premonition to them. They just pass it by. Okay, she has light all over her, so what? You know, and then that's it. Go home, forget all about it. And then husband and wife and children and mortgage and <laughs> insurance and then finito. Yeah, I am forgotten altogether. Yeah, they ask for miracle even. A lot of people who come to lecture, yeah, just show me a sign and I follow her. <laughs> show me a sign that she's a master or something. And they got plenty. And they still don't do anything about it. They say, oh, it's just coincidence. Maybe just something wrong with my eyes. Yeah, something like that, you know, or with their eyes. Yeah, a lot of people, even the people who spoke about it, you know, right in the, in the, in the theater, but not though. They are not the one always come for initiation. Sure. But I think with, at least with the native people, because I know they're waiting and they're laughing. Okay, okay. You, you go and, and connect with them. Yeah. No, no, not laughing. No, not joke. You connect with them. If you know them, you just talk, see how they feel. Okay. All right? Yeah? Maybe they have a way of divination that they know what you say is the truth. Okay? Yes? Anything else, honey? I appreciate what you are thinking. Yeah, uh, at least you are really devoted and think of the way to do it. You do what you think is best and see how it comes, yeah? Okay? At least for your satisfaction that you carry out what you think, all right? Otherwise, you keep thinking forever and it's nagging you and you are tired of thinking. Yes? Master, I'm forever talking to people on the street and many times I give out the sample booklets mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's a man, he's like 73 years old, mm. but he, his, all of his uh, mentality and all of his... Oh, in order, yeah. Okay. In order. But, and he was wanting to do the convenient method. I mm. mentioned it, and he said, I can, I can stop eating uh, yeah. 10 days um, okay. right now. You know, okay. I'll make a commitment right now. Yeah. And we made arrangements for him to come to the meeting, and something happened. Yeah. And then he hurt his back. Yeah. And now he's going to have to have surgery. Oh. Is it, can I make a special arrangement to do the convenient method at his place? Yeah, sure. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> if that's uh, what you want to do, I do it for love, okay? <laughs> See, when he wants to come to God, you know, things always happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They have to be a vegetarian for all. Why only 10 days? If he's so sincere, <laughs> yes. Uh, two things. One, I just wanted to mention, because I didn't say it earlier, the scientists know that the gas could be released, but they don't know how long it would take. They don't know what the tipping point is. If it's 100 years or five years, they don't know. Mm. But um, this question, I'm only asking it because something you said reminded me. Mm. Um, years ago, I could hear people's thoughts, mm -hmm. um, like mostly just in, um, as they pertain to me. Mm -hmm. And so if they had a misgiving about me, I could correct it. I could hear what they thought of me yes, and correct yes. it. And I got initiated, and I thought I shouldn't be able to do that anymore, so mm -hmm. I cut it. You know, mm -hmm. I stopped. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I cut far more than I intended to, like cut um, more of the connection to the universe than I feel like I, a lot more disappeared. Would mm -hmm. it be okay if I welcomed that back in, or should I just let it be? If you keep wanting to listen to people, thought. Yeah, I don't. I don't want that back necessarily. I want the other connections that I had that I think were related to. Like what? I could always sort of go up and and feel connected to God in a way that I just still can't seem to do. Or, or I could pick pieces of information out. Like I felt mm -hmm. like I could tap into things and bring them mm -hmm. to me. And I'm just. Um, I feel still lonely. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I feel like. I okay. cut off it's too much. Okay, then don't cut. Are you sure? Is it, mm -hmm. is it okay? See how it go. If you feel better, if you're more okay. connected with God or not. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Yes. But don't reveal it to anyone. Okay? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Just Mr. for you, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. If it get better, then fine. But if it get worse in meditation, then you really have to cut it, huh? Okay. Just cut the it's connection. It's been a long with, time. Like just with human. Just with human, not with God, huh? Okay. <laughs> Try to trim it, not cut. Okay. <laughs> trim around. <it. laughs> okay. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. Uh, somebody, no? 
I just want to say I love it when you talk about your dog so yeah. much because yeah. it really has helped me understand my dog. Um, I found him, and I think he—I think he's a Maltese cross terrier, mm-hmm. and we named him Benny after your Benny. Oh. Um, but it's funny how you were talking yesterday. How you've got to protect them yeah. in case they hurt someone else, yeah, and then yeah. something happens to uh, them. Sure. No, I'm talking about big dogs, yeah. My small dog is no problem. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So why? Um, my dog bit the postman. Oh, it did. So small and. Okay, so what happened? Yeah, um, the postman got very angry and said, I'm going to report this. Oh, oh God. And, then... and he, he, I haven't heard anything. Uh-huh. But he's been getting, lately, been a bit of aggressive. He bit another dog in a park. Oh, really? And he, since I've had him, because um, I did, well, he found me. I found him in a park lost. Oh, I see. I don't know what happened to him time. before that. Yeah, I understand. But yeah. he can be very aggressive with other dogs. I understand, yes. But very protective of me and, and my understand, family. Understand, understand, yes. Um, and I think he's getting a little bit old. Yes. Do. Yes. So. But yeah, yeah, just wondering why he's he's like what that. What do you feed him? No, it's his background that make him like that. He's been oh. harassed. Oh, really? He hasn't been loved. Yeah, of course, and he become habit. You just tell him, you don't need to worry here. I protect you and nothing will happen, yeah? And try not to open the door when the, the postman came. <laughs> if you know his habit, you trim it, okay? You yeah. protect him, all right? All right. Mm. Yeah. Most of my dogs are okay, just the new dogs. They are a little bit uh, protective and aggressive, yeah? They haven't been loved. They don't trust mm-hmm. human too much, yeah? But the bigger dog, he's very good with human now. But still, I'm careful, you see? Before, huh? Uh, uh, he doesn't want any human nearby. But now anybody come to my house, he's wagging tails and go and lick him and kiss him right away, give him paw, shake hand, all that. Yeah, he trusts human now because he's been loved and he know he's secure. But when he first came, he even beat me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you rescue dog and then you have nothing. <laughs> It depends on what dog, huh? Uh, first time he beat me because he didn't. He he want to protect the other guy, which is my disciple, because I wasn't up there. I tell them to take care and bring him to hospital first. Yeah, quickly. Because I wasn't there. I run away. At that time, okay, I had to go away from that country. And then the disciple, I say to the disciple, come and have a look, see if he's okay. And he's not okay. He wounded and all that. So I said, take him out right away. Yeah. And take him. So he recognized that guy only and not me. Even though I promised him I would do something, I would take care of him well. next, you know, and I send them instead of me. I wasn't there. In winter I wasn't there. So I sent him and then he, so he just recognized that person help him and he doesn't know I'm the one behind it, yeah? So when that person bring the dog to me, after all that, you know, when I already have a house and settle down and they can, I can bring him then, you know, before I could not. I was in a rented house and all that. I still run around. I don't have a place. I was running away. You know, many things happen, you know, bureaucracy and stuff. So I didn't have a place, yeah? So when I have a place, I sent him over. And he only tried to protect that guy, not me, you see? Nobody can go near that guy. And then later I say, why you do that? You know, I'm the one who rescued you. you. You should know. Even though I wasn't there for you, but I promise you I would do something, I help you. So I send that guy to come, so you should not bite me. And he was so sorry. He was sorry, sorry, and he licked my wound and all that. Yeah. And all wh- the time he, he was fighting with the smaller dog, and I, I tried to separate him, and he beat me again. And after that, I know already, he could do mistakenly, bite people as well, even though he didn't want to. So I have to guard him in that case. You see what I mean? I have to tell him, don't touch any human, or you will die. You bite me, okay, I forgive you. But if you bite somebody else, maybe they kill you. You understand? Because in many countries, uh, the, the law protects human more than you, more than dogs. You are nothing to many people. You are nothing. You must understand that. You are my treasure, but you're nothing to somebody else, nothing to many people outside. You don't go near human. You don't touch them. You don't need to protect me. You just have to be quiet. Stay away from human. Oh, I was so scared, you know, because some of my dogs are so protective. If the uh, human go near me, they bite. 
and not too much, just a warning bite. But still, what if that person become aggressive and sue us and then or kill my dog, you know? So I have to protect all of them. Everywhere I go, I, the first thing I do is fence the yard, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Before I fence the yard, I put them all on leash and hold it tight so they don't run away from the caretaker or from me. You see what I mean? And after the yard is done, then they can run more free. The first thing I do is fence the yard. That's that, okay? And I put the electricity box, telephone, everything, the mailbox outside of the fence. <laughs> you understand? I lock my gate and everything. I put the sign, beware of my dogs. <laughs> yes, something like that. Do you understand me? Because the dogs can be friendly, but sometimes some people are bad. They just bite. Yeah, they know that bad person. Maybe not that bad to you, but uh, the bad energy, and they sense it, and they just bite, okay? Or maybe you're just too near, and they just bite. Or the person too near, and the defensive system, you know, automatic, they just bite. Yeah? You know, the... He didn't mean to bite me, it's just because I separate them, you know? And he, he, he want to bite the other dog, but he bit me instead. That was the second time. The first time he did bite on purpose. But he said sorry. But he didn't know me well, you see what I mean? He only know the person who took care of him, took the chain out of him. He didn't know it was me. Maybe he knew, but, you know, dog a dog, they're so faithful to the caretaker only, yeah? I, I was not his friend yet. He didn't trust me yet. He trusts nobody. He trusts no human. You see what I mean? So it was very hard to even get him to trust the, my disciple, the one who, who freed him, you see what I mean? So after that, and then after that he, he goes to the house, immediately he has to go to the doctor because of the wound. And it takes three months, so many care and medication because of so many medicine for him also. You know, the post-operation trauma, yeah? And he's been aggressive, so I forgive him everything. But because I know he's like that, so I have to protect him. And he says, a one of only, you know? Oh, the other dog, the new one, they're all very nervous and aggressive to human. To some human, yeah? But I don't know who, so I also have to protect them. And another thing is, uh, yeah, uh, if I know like that, I, I cannot give a chance, you see what I mean? And uh, he also was aggressive with the one passerby before and a neighbor, so once like that, so I have to be careful with all my dogs. The other, uh, my five dogs, they're less aggressive now, yeah, because they're more used to with me and they're more confident. It's my house, my master, you know, nothing can happen to me. But the, the new dogs, they are still more nervous. But he's exceptional. The big one is better than the, the other three new ones. Yeah, I have uh, more new ones, yeah. There were other three, yeah, and the solo is the biggest one. But he's the best of them. Because after he learned to trust human already, now everybody come to his house, it's just for him to play with him. That's what he thinks. Yeah, to give him, you know, a special favorite green bone. Because whenever human come to my house, you know, new disciple or new attendant, I give them a bunch of, you know, the favorite <laughs> bone of the dog. Okay, first come in, yeah. I tell him first, okay, this guy is coming, he's good, he's going to take care of you, you better be good to him, and he's a goodies, he have a pocket full of goodies. If, he, if you're good, you get some. Okay, and first he come in, I hold on the leash, yeah? And let the person slowly approach with the bone right in front already. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, solo, it's going to be okay, right? And I got the okay with him first. Then the person opened the the hand, not not give like this, maybe get the finger, you know. So open the hand, the, the bone, the uh, vegetarian bone just lay flat on his hand and he just eat it. But first he take it and he drop it and then he smell him all over. He say, I don't trust you yet, huh? He say, no, you cannot buy me, huh? And, but then later slowly everybody come, just give him green bone and biscuits, you know, even though forbidden stuff, but for friendship I allow it to happen, you know, biscuits, all the... You know, sweet stuff and green bone, anything. So now any human come to my house, he immediately welcome, wagging tail, licking, kissing, all over. But he's an exception, you see? Other dogs, it's not so easy. And he's so sweet. So he's big, but he's so sweet. Just because he had been chained day and night before, so he was aggressive. He doesn't, doesn't trust human. Before anybody come, huh? Oh. God, it's so difficult to control him. He will want to jump on them, want to kill him. Anybody come in the house at all. 
except the family member that he already knows me and a couple. The rest, anybody go near, anybody come to my house is a trauma. But I had to train, you know, like that. And now, now you don't even need to train. No need green bone, no need biscuits, nothing. Anybody come, he welcome right away. He like his buddy, he come and give the paw. You know, I shake hand. You see, shake my hand and he jump on him, you know, slowly and kiss him and welcome him. There was one time because I was so tired and I'm busy. There was one new attendant come, you know, and I I'm too tired, so I put him in his room, yeah, when I'm not there, because I said, okay, you just come here and stay in my house for a while, okay? I have no other room, just, just stay upstairs next to my room, but you don't open this door, okay? There's a big dog horse in there. You don't talk to him, you don't touch him, you don't uh, bury nothing, okay, until I, I'm ready to let you come in. I'm too tired even to leash him and, and wait until the friendship begins and give him bone and all that, because I have to be there to, to watch, you see? until it better. So I'm too tired at that moment, at that period of time. So I let the guy stay in there for days, two, three days, four days, and I'm too tired to even talk about the subject. You know, I just put the dog in the other side and he goes through different door, you see? And this door we lock from inside so the dog don't come in. I said, don't you ever touch this door. Just leave it alone. Okay, so the dog can see him, yeah, from the other room because our glass door and it's open. His room is big. Yeah, anyway, the dog's room is big. <laughs> the human room is small. <laughs> well, I don't have a bigger room for the human. Yeah. Originally, that room, the dog's there, is my office. Yeah. But later, uh, so many dogs, so I just give them all, and I don't have any more. So there's a small room for the guy. I said, don't just stay up there and go to the living room, kitchen, okay, but don't go through that door, don't open, don't go near, don't provoke him. Okay. Four or five days later, I'm better, yeah, I'm better, less work and less stress and, you know, sickness or something. God. So I come down and try to give bone or something to this guy and begin the training, you know. And I open the door slowly and hold him, you know, with the leash and, and get the guy ready with the bone, you know. And what did he do? The big giant horse? He come in, jump right on the guy, kiss him all over. Oh, I don't even care about the bone. <laughs> he keep holding the bone, but he jump licking him everywhere. <laughs> he ignore the bone completely. Yeah, I was so happy. <laughs> it's amazing. So later I said, hey, Zolo, the bone. And he just lick it and then continue to lick the guy. <laughs> like, I know it, you know, I can do it later. So, oh. And then from that day, every day, you just open the door and just like usual, yeah? He come in, the dog come out, it doesn't matter. He and dog all together, it doesn't matter. Oh, I was so happy. That is the turning point that I know from then I can trust him now with human. I mean, with the human who come in my house. But I, I'm always careful. It's never hurt, okay? If your dog already bites one postman, the chance that he will bite again. You see, you don't have time to train him to get acquainted with human. If you have time, you train him, then he will trust the human, yeah? But uh, I'm worried you don't have enough time and chance to trust everybody who comes to your house, you see? So it's better you leash him, okay? When the dog man comes, you just leash him, tie him tight in a corner. You don't have a fence, yeah? Or put him in, leave him in the house when a postman come. Or lock him in some room, close the or kitchen, something, until the postman come go away. The mm. problem is we're, we're renting a house with a small backyard, and he needs to have a bit of activity, so sometimes we of throw course. the ball for him. Yeah, he has to course. chase the ball. And, um, um, yeah, and that's the chance that oh, we took him. The postman went by oh, and went straight for him. And, oh, and he, when he's in the house, he, mm. he looks up at the window and he Wants just barks at everyone that, no, very... Anyone that walks past, uh -huh. just he bark. Yeah, he's just a guard he get, dog all he the get time. Tense up, yeah. You see, mm. maybe he has been abused by human before. That's why. You see, my big dog when he first come, he bites anybody at all, mm. anybody. Yeah, uh, but now he doesn't. Mm. You see, now he doesn't. Now I'm worried human <laughs> might abuse him because he's so sweet and gentle and uh, you know very docile now. And for that, I have also tried to protect him mm. <laughs> in case some bad guy. You know, some people, they snack dog to sell for laboratory and all that. You never know even. If your dog too aggressive, no good. If your dog is too sweet, no good. <laughs> you always keep an eye on him, on your dogs, yeah? 
Not because he's aggressive only, but if he's too sweet, also no good. Eh? He's uh, vulnerable to bad human. They might poison him. They might give him bad stuff. Or they might snatch him away from you, and then you die. Just keep an eye on him all the time. If you can ask your landlord to fence a simple yard, and he will be okay. Just don't do anything expensive. Just buy a row of, you know, those uh, iron, huh? Iron fence. Those uh, with, uh, you know, some are very big holes, you know, very cheap, and one row, and you just put two or three uh, iron um, uh, pole, you know, about this big, you can buy in uh, Home Depot, uh, bricolage, Home Depot, yeah. And you just uh, knock, knock it down with the hammer, yeah, two, three, and, and then you, you, you tie it on, and you can always remove it easily, yeah? That's it. He knows the limit. He can run in the backyard, but he won't jump on people. And for such a small dog, which is 50, half a meter we do or something, it, it doesn't look very bad. You don't buy those a thick fence, so it looks like a fence. You buy those with a big hole like this, and it looks almost invisible. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It don't take, don't take long. You can do it yourself even. Yeah. Or you and your husband or you and a friend have very quick. Yeah? Sometimes you don't need to. If you have trees, you can just tie it on the tree loosely. Yeah? That's fine. Just, just so that he knows the limit. Okay? All right. Any other cat? My <laughs> <laughs> dog loves greenies, and then they changed the formula. Uh, they changed? So now? In Canada, yeah. but now they put gelatin in it. Oh. So I don't get it anymore, and she really misses it. Also, she had good... What kind of, ge what kind of gel jelly? Gelatin. Just gelatin. the ingredients, it says gelatin. But gelatin sometimes from fruit also. Would you call the company and ask what kind of gelatin they put in there? Is I've, animal? I've emailed them a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, so so it's the same one that I got now. Is that from America? Now, from Canada. Softer. I don't know. Softer now because dogs were choking or something, so now they're softer. Yeah. And they, they put gelatin. gelatin. Oh, but they there are still plenty without gelatin. Buy something else. I've been just really looking to uh -huh. get one. There are different kind of greenies. Yeah. Maybe they made it also in Taiwan without gelatin. You ask if they can send a box. Okay. Okay? You ask them at least if they know it or not, because originally they sent me some from Taiwan. Just ask in Internet if anybody know about a greeny vegetarian bone without jelly, please tell us quick. <laughs> UK, UK is good. There's UK a is good? in UK that I yeah? accessed on Internet, yeah. Oh, what a pity. Yeah. Why? Write to the company and tell them oh, don't put jelly. Done. You did? Yes. And they don't, yes. they don't change? They don't listen, no. Oh, stupid people. Yeah. If enough people write in, maybe they change. Because one time, uh, I think one of the chocolate company want to put the animal stuff in it, and a lot of the vegan people write to them, or vegetarian people write to them, and then they stop. Uh, they change. Uh, yeah, it helps, but you do your best. Otherwise, tell your dogs you're sorry. <laughs> Give him something else. No, but that's true. What you say that uh, the same company, Nyla Bone, mm -hmm. they said that there was so much request for vegetarian dog products mm -hmm. that they're putting out some new ones. Yeah, okay. And that was supposed to be in September, but they haven't hit Canada yet. So oh, okay. So things are getting Ask better. them when they're hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> also, tell them, please send me a box quick, my dog are dying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm so sorry that the world is not uh, the way we want, so, but try your best. Okay, mm -hmm. call the company. Call five, four, five times a different uh, uh, street uh, telephone so they don't know it's the same person. <laughs> Put something on your mouth, talk a different voice. <laughs> Ask your friend, your initiate people, call in different time all the time. Make them feel like a lot of people calling. <laughs> and maybe one day you hit a good manager who have a dog, who are vegetarian dog, and who are vegetarian, maybe he have an influence. Yeah? Okay. Email, you know, in different email account. <laughs> Send letter, different uh, writing. Yeah? Uh, yeah, call with different voice or uh, acid to say to help you. <laughs> I just keep saying the same thing. My dog is very sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're getting tired of sad. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Sometimes people have to write hundreds of letters before they get a response to anything. Okay, you're a tired guy. Wanna have a rest? Yeah? Have a rest, eh? Oh? Anything else? Like life and death story? Dogs? Cat? I listen.
Yeah. Um, did, did you read about Shayna, the dog that saved her owner's lives? We, we, did, we gave her one of the yeah. World Shining Hero Awards. Yes. She's half wolf. Yes. She's half wolf, and she saved her owner's lives. Yes. Yeah. I was the one who, I live nearby, so I yeah. went to give the award. Yes. And she is such an enormous dog, like 180 pounds or yes. 160 pounds, just yes. huge. Her tail is this big oh. around. Oh. And her owner only weighs about 90 pounds, this little old lady. Yeah. And uh, when all the initiates went and the dog came in, you felt so peaceful. The dog yeah. was so peaceful and kind. And, yeah. you know, you, you weren't afraid of her at all, even though she's so enormous. I'd never Shana? seen Shana, yeah. yeah. Oh, Shana. Okay. I'd never seen a dog that big. She's oh. so huge. Oh, really? And uh, we had the coats that you made. You for haven't her? seen my dog, that's yeah. why. Uh, <laughs> we he had... eat direct from the table. Yeah. It's so tall. He just wow. leaks on from the table. Look at what is it? <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah. It's as high, higher than the table, you know, a big, big eating picnic white table, plastic white table with a hole in the middle. Yeah. He direct on top of it. <laughs> His head is about like this. He look around and say, what do you have for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> the table is shorter than him. He don't need no chair, nothing. And then what happened? So you had made the coats for her? Yes. So, and um, she was laying very peacefully, and I mm -hmm. thought, oh, I'll put the coat on now. Mm -hmm. And I reached for her paw. Mm -hmm. And she growled at me, mm. and every cell in my body just stopped. Like yeah. time stopped. I was yeah. so terrified. She's so huge. Yeah. And uh, her owner, it seemed like she was a million miles away, said to me, "Oh, her paw is injured from when she saved oh, us, so yeah. that she was trying to protect herself." Oh, okay. But it was so terrifying, and I, yeah, I, I know, sat down. I, I was so shaken, yeah, and I sat I'm down sure. on the um, on the uh, chair. Mm. And she came over and put her paw on me yeah. to, like, apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. But I was so scared. I was like, what is she doing? What yes. is she doing? You know, I was so scared. Yeah, frightened. I know, I know. But she was just, you know, she made it clear she that she was sorry. sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. That she had it's scared. just, uh, like, automatic reaction. She didn't right, right, mean right. to scare you. Yeah. It, it, and it's so sweet. She came yeah, to apologize. I, I was just still... I know. When she growled, I mean, don't touch that part. That's what she meant only, but because she's so huge. And you don't know her, of course. So... Actually, it's like that. When you see another dog, no matter how sweet they look, yeah, because the owner is there. So maybe they try to also protect the owner, or to tell you, keep the distance, don't touch me, because sometimes people just touch it random and no respect, and they don't like that. They're just like human. If somebody come and just pop your head like that, you don't like, you know? <laughs> just because they're small size and they're cute, people just come and kick them around, pull their tail, or just pop their head like that. It's no good. So you have to ask the owner. First, ask the owner permission. Yeah, some owner don't like, I mean, some caretaker don't like you to touch their dog at random. I don't like people touch my dog also. And <laughs> least of all, they, <laughs> they don't like it. Yeah? My dog, for example, the Australian Shepherd, they're very friendly. He's friendly to people. He don't growl or anything like that. But if they want to touch him, he just hide behind me. He just want to show that. You know, that's the limit, okay? <laughs> I say hello to you. That's good enough. <laughs> don't touch me. Because some people, bad energy, they also don't like, you see? So when you want to touch some other dog, you have to ask the owner permission and ask if it's okay, if she's friendly, if, if we can touch her or not, you see? The best like that, okay? Yeah. Yeah, she had a whole technique where the dog would be outside and she'd have everybody sit down mm -hmm. and give everybody a bone. Mm -hmm. And then she'd let the dog in and he, she'd come running and she was so friendly. Yeah. But just so she could see that everybody was there and yeah. she wasn't going to knock anybody down or anything. Yeah. So she had a whole sort of way to introduce the dog. Yeah, it's better. But every dog is different, huh? You know, my little dog, Maltese, she's, he's friendly to absolute everything that moves. <laughs> you know, especially human. And he knows who's sad and who's not. He's especially kind to uh, lonely kids, you know. <laughs> oh, there's some sad people inside, and he would come and comfort and lick and hug and all that. I have an attendant, I told you, you know. He pretend to cry, you know, when I scold him, just for fun, you know, sometimes. And then he pretend to cry, uh, and then Benny come all worry all over him, jump over him, kiss him, hug him and stay with him, you know, play with him, <laughs> bring toys, <laughs> stuff like that, yeah? And I have another dog, Happy, she's absolutely friendly with everybody. She would never hurt a fly. But if somebody go near, suddenly she would bark. And I'm surprised that she even barked <laughs> at the people because <laughs> she's so friendly and she especially have a, a soft spot for older people, senior citizen. If she see any older person, you know, with the can or something like that walking by, she go, oh, oh, oh. she would like to love to come out and lick them, kiss them, you know, kiss them. 
But uh, one day I took her out on the beach, you know, because the beach was nobody. And then suddenly some people, old people go by, and she almost knocked them over because she jumped on them and wanted to lick and kiss them. And they were so scared, you see what I mean? Yeah. Because I didn't see anybody approaching, suddenly from a corner of another street, and some people were coming, and she just got loose from, from me, you know, because nobody. Yeah, and I hold the leash not too tight. If I'm in the public, I always hold the leash. It's better. Because it's not just to protect other, protect my dog. In case she jump on the wrong people or jump on the wrong dog, you know, or she jump away somewhere and the car hit her or anything. So if I'm in the public area without fence, I always have my dogs on leash, small, big, or alike, just to protect my dogs, eh? Okay. So um, why we talk about that? Oh, oh, oh! I say every dog is different. It's like that, yeah. And even my friendly dog, I'm still worried, you know, because some people when sometimes she jump on people like that. She means friendly only, but she's so strong she can knock me over, you know. Sometimes it's like she punch you, you know. She looks so small like that, but when she jump on you, like she punch you, <laughs> it feel very very strong. So if an old lady or something, oh, you have to be careful with dogs, yeah. With some people, they don't like dogs also, you know, they are afraid of dogs because they've been bitten or something. Some people just don't like animals, huh? they think dirty and low class, and so they just listen to themselves. So always when you go out, keep it on leash, okay? So he doesn't bite other dogs as well, okay? Keep it tight, yeah? When you see other dog, you tighten the leash, and you say, no, yeah. stay, yeah? And you steer him somewhere else then, okay? Yeah. Some dogs are like that. Hmm? The other thing, Master, is um, if I take him up to the shops, yeah. um, just tie him up to a chair or something, if I go in the shop, yeah. I don't like to do it, but I bought a little muzzle, I don't mm -hmm. like putting it on yeah. him. But some parents just let their children go up. Yeah, I know, you put a muzzle on. Children. Yeah, I know, you put the muzzle on, it's yeah, best. It's best. Protect him. Yeah, you have to. Yes. Children can just run up to any dog. I know. And like you said, they'll just go up and sort of touch the dog or hit the dog. Yeah, the and they pull the tail and all that stuff. Yeah. The children are bad sometimes. And then if woe to the dog, if he brow at him or beat him or bleed him, oh, God, then your dog will be in trouble. They don't care uh, what child is right or wrong, naughty or not. The dog is the fault. Always the dog is a trouble, yeah? So we always have to protect the dog, okay? Talking about, uh, about dog protect you is all wrong. You have to protect your dog because their life is not as worse as a human in this kind of society. You understand me? So if you love your dog, you have to protect them. Truly, it's like that. So one time I was very mad at one center that they, they adopted two dogs just to protect them, you know. I said, what? So what do you imagine? Huh? You imagine these two dogs will come out and take the bullet for you or get bitten by the thieves for you, get cut through for you? Is that what you imagine? That's how they protect you? Yeah? Instead of your life? You understand me? Yeah. So because if the dog come out and bark at the thieves and all that, the thief might kill them. You see what I mean? So what kind of protection do you want? You understand, huh? So if, if you adopt the dogs because you love the dogs, yeah? Not because you want the dog to protect you. You have to protect the dogs. That's your responsibility to protect your family member. They're smaller, they're more helpless, understand? They don't have any right, like a human right. Do you understand me? If a dog and a human fight and they always, you know, how you say, side on the human side and would kill the dog or jail the dog or do something to the dog, but they don't do it to human. Even the human was just abusing the dog, kick the dog or provoke the dog or something, they don't care about that. You see what I mean? In our society, dogs are still less than humans, so you have to protect him, yeah? If it's too bad to go shopping, then don't go shopping. And if you go shopping, put muzzle on, it won't hurt him, it will protect him. I put my uh, dog's muzzle on when I have to go in hotel or on the street, I do that, you understand me? Especially the one that might bite, you see? Even now he's friendly to humans, but I don't know if he's friendly to everybody or not. He's friendly to people who come to my house because I told him first. Okay, there's somebody coming. He's good. He's my disciple. He's going to be your buddy. He will feed you. He'll be good to you. And he knows it, okay? But uh, on the street, somebody step on him or go next to him or uh, touch him by chance, and he might just uh, uh, has a, a reaction, you know? 
automatic. He would just crack like this, and he's so big. If he just crush you like this, you're wounded and bleeding already. And people will go hell. Ah,、oh, the dog bite me. Ah,、oh, bad dog, bad dog. Police, police. You know, nine one one. And then the dog is doomed. Did you ever see anybody that get a dog bite and the dog have any chance? No. No chance. You understand me? If by bit by badly and something happen,、uh, the dogs are always the one who die. Yeah, get bad treatment, get taken away, get jail, everything. Oh, horrible. So protect your pets, okay? Cats, dog, I like birds also. Bird they bite too, huh? They bite stranger. Understand me? <laughs> My bird didn't, but always have to be careful, huh? Always careful. It's the best to protect your pet. Then your family member, they're smaller. They don't have the right. They don't have protection that you have. You see, you got to protect him. Okay, understand everybody? Yeah. All right. You must protect the dog. <laughs> it's it's a paradox, contrary to what people are thinking, the trend of society. But that's the way it is. Yeah. If you are my disciple, you protect your dogs. You understand me? You protect dog, not dog protect you. He would do it anyway if he can, if he has to. But it's not the motive of you having a dog. Okay. Yeah. All right, cat, bird, chicken, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> you seem to be wide awake, huh? You okay? <laughs> All right, we、uh, take a break anyway. Five o'clock, okay? Thank no, ah,、uh, you're welcome. <laughs> is that is that for me or for dogs? <laughs> I love you too. I love you too. If you behave good, <laughs> no, actually, it's easy to please me. No, just common sense. I just don't do anything nonsense. Yeah, like barge into my room. That will make me mad. It does. You don't have to slap me. It <laughs> make me mad. Every little, th- you know, the little thing, no big thing. Okay, no big thing that to keep the relationship. Just don't break it. That's all. Okay, it's so easy. No. Is it easy to make me happy? Yes. You just yourself be happy, <laughs> and don't make any extra. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't force me to take the candy when I say no already. I'm busy, and I don't need it. Okay, not because you want me to have a candy that I have to have a candy that I have to acknowledge that you are just a kind person. You understand this? It's a nuisance. You understand? It's not a big thing to to break a relationship in in your house. Also the same. A、husband and wife is the same. Not a big thing that break a relationship. It's just those nuisance, stupid ego. Yeah. Okay. Ciao, ciao. I miss you. Thank you. See, I'm very easy, no? Huh? Easy going person, no? Fun loving, right? Yeah. I have no problem. Just don't bug me.